bring up the page that we started on last time, which was a page about digital photography. And it looked like this when we viewed it within a browser. Remember, and, and, and I get this uh, a lot of times every semester. I'll have students that will say something to the effect of the notepad file versus the HTML file. There's only one file. There's only one uh, photography.html. If you have two, then, then you saved it wrong, and you should talk to me, and we can take a look at it. It's just that we can view it two different ways. We can view it through the web browser, which is how the world will see it once we put it on a web server. You can also view it in Notepad or Notepad++ or any number of different text editors which sort of gives you a look at the insides of it, the, the actual structure of it. And that's the mode that you're in when you're developing the web pages. All right? And then you test them by double clicking them and viewing them in the browser and seeing how they're going to look in, in that mode. The one thing I would suggest is that you turn on file extensions. All right? And I'll show you how to do it in this version of Windows. In other versions of Windows, it's a little bit different. All right? But you go in and in um, Windows 7, there's a little link here that I forget exactly what it says. But there, in both modes, there'll be a folder options uh, menu selection. You pick that Oops. under view. There is a hide extensions for known file types. That should be checked off. All right? That should not be checked. It should be off. All right? What that does is that shows you the complete name of the file. So, for example, if we were to look at this in my computer, if I go to the desktop, that's not where I wanted to go. There we go. We can see that that file name is actually photography.html. If you turn those extensions off, you'll just see photography. And the reason it's a good idea to do that is, is in development mode, you need to know the exact name of the files. All right? And some files have the potential to have other extensions. And by extension, I mean the characters after the period. So for example, a JPEG file can be .jpeg or .jpg. An HTML file can be .html or .htm. Well, we need to know the, the precise, complete file name, ex including the extensions when we're, when we're developing. So by turning on extensions, like on your computer at home or in the computers in lab, you can see that, and, and that will eliminate some of the errors and problems that you run into. All right. Let's go and look at this. And how would I open it up in Notepad? Well, there's several ways. One way is you could open up Notepad, and then you can browse to it by clicking Open. You do have to change files of type.txt to all files, and then you can go in and open it. All right. Let's run through uh, this, and this should be reviewed, so we'll just spend a couple minutes uh, reviewing this. First of all, there's this at the beginning, which is not really a tag, but it's a declaration. And this is a doc type declaration for HTML5. This tells the browser that we're following the rules of HTML5. All right, so it should be the first line in every page that you turn in. All right, that one, you know, just keep it exactly like that. After that, we have the basic tags for the web page. And the following tags will be on every web page. There'll be an HTML tag with its corresponding end HTML tag at the bottom. There'll be a head section and the end head. And there'll be the body and the end body. All right. So those three pairs of tags are on every page. HTML, head, body. The head is information about the page. All, right? all the content that's going to appear on the screen is going to be within the body tag. Now, 
you only have one head and one body section. All right. So I saw some students last time they had a couple body sections around each maybe subsection of their page. You only have one body section in your page. You have a head and you have a body. All right. Within the head, we're going to learn some things that we can put in it, but um, the main thing that we're going to start out with is we're going to put the title of the page in there. And the title of the page is what appears on the title bar when you're viewing it in the browser. It also will appear down there on the task bar, again, depending on your operating system. So, for example, if I open this up in the browser, I said the title of my page was photography, and that's what it says up here. All right. And if I look at the task bar, which you may not be able to see, it says photography down there. For now, that's all that's going to be in the head section is the title. Um, we'll add some things throughout the semester, but that's the main thing. The body is where everything that's going to appear on the screen, everything that's going to appear in the body of the page the main window is going to appear. Now, a couple things. Nesting. Notice uh, that these tags are nested properly. What do I mean? I mean they, they contain each other correctly. In other words, the, the idea of nesting is like this. If a tag starts within a tag, it will also end within the tag. So, for example, this title tag. The title tag starts inside the head tag. What do I mean to say that it starts within the head tag, a head tag? I mean that it's after the starting head tag and before the ending head tag. That means it's part of the head section. Something that's between a start and end tag is part of that section, part of that tag. And since the title tag starts within the head tag, it needs to end within the head tag. So the way I have it is correct. All right. If I were to do this, it would be incorrect. Because the start of the title tag is within the head tag, but the end of the title tag is outside of the head tag. So that would be incorrect. Now, what happens if you're incorrect? What happens if you get a tag wrong? It depends. All bets are off at that point. It might actually work, right? It might work with no problem, all right? And you might not even notice that there is a problem with the tags. We'll talk about later on in the course a tool that you can use to make sure that you haven't broken any of these rules. However, if you break these rules, you run the risk, either with current browsers or with future browsers, that your page won't display correctly, all right? Because you broke the rules. All right. Just like if you break the rules of grammar and, and use a double negative, let's say, you know, you run the risk of someone misinterpreting you and, and getting it wrong. You know, if you follow the words of grammar, people should understand what you're saying. If you break the rules, people are liable to get confused and liable to do something wrong, liable to, liable to come to the wrong conclusion. So it's a sort of the same idea with tags. So we want to follow the rules. So Tags need to be nested. Tags come in pairs. There's a starting tag and there's an ending tag. All right. The ending tag is simply the starting tag with a slash in front of the name of the tag. So, for example, the ending tag for title is slash end title. The other thing that you may notice is what I've done is I've indented the code to make the nesting more obvious. That, is, that is, is, is simply for my purpose. It's not for the purpose of the browser. This HTML page, this entire page could be simply on one giant line of text with no, page, with no uh, line breaks, no line returns, or nothing. Just one giant line. And the browser would figure it out if the tags were correct. All right. Who is going to have a problem with that? You're going to have a problem with that if you have to go in and change something because it won't be clear like what is nested in what and it will cause all sorts of confusion. So therefore, what I typically do is I indent to show the nesting. So I don't have to do this, but I put, since the head tag is part of the HTML tag, I indent the head tag. 
since the title tag is part of the head tag, I indent the title tag a little bit further. All right. That shows that this is part of this, which is part of this. White space also doesn't matter between words or extra lines. For example, in this case I have digital photography made easy. I have the words on three separate lines. Now, when I view it in the browser, it doesn't put it on separate lines. All right, it puts it all on one line. So the browser equates any white space as a simple space. And that seems a little confusing at first, but that's actually a good thing because that allows you to format the code in your HTML file in a way that makes it readable, understandable, so that you can go back and change it later without affecting the way it looks. So that, that's actually a good thing. And, and students occasionally get a little confused or frustrated with that at first, but eventually, uh, you'll come to see how that, that actually works to your advantage. Now, as far as specific tags go, remember the tags um, or markup are the way to indicate to the browser what the pieces of text mean. All right, this is hypertext. It's not plain old text. In other words, it's more than just plain old text because in addition to the words, we're giving the browser some information about those words, some additional meaning to those words. So this word photography isn't just simply the word photography. It's the title of the page. This phrase, digital photography made easy, is not simply um, a, you know, uh, uh, the words that. It's a top level heading. It's a main idea, uh, it's a main idea on the page. Selecting a camera is not just um, the word selecting a camera. It's a second level idea, all right? And, and this is a, meant to be a paragraph. This is meant to be an H3, which on an outline puts us below an H2, and so on down the line. Now, a couple things to keep in mind. I noticed uh, every semester a few students do this, is these H1s, H2s, H3s aren't necessarily numbered sequentially. In other words, you don't make your first heading an H1, the second an H2, the third an H3. It relates to the level that the heading is as opposed to the sequence it is. So for example, I have two H3s here. All right. Why do I have two H3s? Because this heading and this heading are on the same level conceptually. If I was writing out an outline, those would be on the same level of the outline. The other thing is paragraphs aren't numbered, right? Because all paragraphs are essentially considered equal. So I don't have a P1 tag, a P2 tag, a P3 tag. They're all just paragraphs. So there's just a paragraph tag for that. This should largely be review. Are there any questions about this? Uh, yeah, you said uh, spaces don't count in the title. Yet when they, you put the browser on it, the space, uh, there was a space between each word. So is it considered that we can accept that it's an inferred rule? That if there is a, uh, a word that's on a different line, it will automatically be a space put in there? Um, you, you mean like this? Yeah. Yeah. Again, um, to be more precise, it's not that spaces or extra lines are ignored. It's that any space, any white space, for example, from here to here is white space, right? That gets reduced to a single space. So here, the highlighted area are all the spaces that are in there. That gets reduced to a single space. So if we notice here, there's a single space between there. So it doesn't matter how much there is. You know, I could put it way down there if I wanted to. And if I view this and refresh, it's still the single space. So it's not, if I said that spaces are ignored, uh, I misspoke. Extra spaces are ignored, extra line breaks are ignored. And, and they all get reduced to just one space. All right. 
so far, the stuff that we've been going over is just basic HTML. This has been available in, 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 since the earliest versions of HTML. Now, today we're going to get into um, some specific HTML5 stuff. All right? And these relate to sort of the structure of a page. All right? If you go to you know, any page out there. Let's pick a page. This one is a great resource for web developers. All right, it's called A List Apart. All right. You'll notice that there are certain things that this page has in common with most other pages. All right. There's sort of a banner on the page, uh, a heading or a header that, that indicates what the page is about. If we go down to the bottom, there's a footer that maybe has some other information uh, in it, you know, copyright notice, some other things. There's a navigation section. All right. Then on this page, there's a series of articles. Here's the first article. All right. Actually, this page right now only has one article on it. Well, it has one main article, and then it kind of has a side article, a sidebar. Let's go to some other pages. Let's go to some other pages and look. All right. Here's another example of a page. We have our banner. We have an article, another article, a third article, and so on. And at the bottom of the page, we have a footer. All right. Here's the W3C web page. W3C is the organization that like makes up all these web standards. Uh, make, makes up sounds sounds wrong. Develops. It makes it sound like they just made them up. Like, yeah, this is what we're going to do. No, they, they develop them over time. And you notice that there's a banner up here, a header for the whole page. All right. There's navigation. And then there's a set of articles. All right. And so on. So most web pages have a few things in common, some sort of common structural elements, we can call them. And those include a header on the top of the page, or, or a banner, sometimes people call it, that identifies the page and says, hey, this is what this page is about. All right? That's a good idea to have. You don't want people guessing what your page is. You know, that sounds dumb, all right? and it sounds like in some cases it would be obvious. But it's probably good to, to, to say it anyhow. Let me give you a for instance. The Ford Motor Company. All right. Um, the Ford Motor Company, you know, you go to Ford.com, I imagine their website is. All right. Uh, and it probably says, you know, the, the website for Ford, Mo for Ford Motor Company. And you're able to think, well, what else could it be? Right. Well, if you think about it, even Ford Motor Company is liable to have different websites for different aspects of their business. They're liable to have an investor's web page, website for people that, that are, want to invest in it. They're liable to have a page that, um, you know, for, for the, that's their main site that consumers will go to. They might have a special employee portal that you can go into and so on. So it's probably good even for one that's obvious like that to identify exactly what this purpose of this site is. So that's typically in some sort of banner. All right. 
there then is going to be navigation, right? Because, you know, the whole point of hypertext is that pages are linked together. So there's going to be a section of your page that's devoted to navigation. And you can navigate a couple different ways. You can navigate between pages. You know, you can click on a link and go to a second page. You can actually navigate within a page. And we'll see an example of that um, in a couple minutes here. All right. So that's the second thing. Then you could say there's other sections. Some of those sections you might call articles, like I called on some of those pages, I said, here's an article, there's an article. Some of them may not really be articles, but they're sections of their own. They might be more generic type sections. Um, other, uh, others of them, you could call like an aside. Like in a magazine, you know, they, they might have uh, an article about, uh, you know, the U.S. Tennis Open. And there might be a sidebar that talks about maybe a famous match that happened in 1980 or something. It's not the main article, but it's kind of like related to it. So it's like kind of they put it to the side. All right. Um, and lastly, there might be a footer at the bottom of the page that has copyright information or contact information or something like that. So many pages have these common elements in it. And in HTML5, there's tags for each of these elements. And so what we're going to do for the remainder of class is talk about the tags for these main sections. All right. Let's look at our page. And I'm going to start by sketching out how my page is going to look like. Right now, I only have one article on the page, right? If we go back here. Digital photography made easy. That's sort of the header for the whole page, right? Then I have an article about selecting a camera. Let's say I could have a second article about using your camera's controls. All right, that might be a good second article. All right. So let's talk about if I were to add that second article to this page, how I would want the page to be structured. All right, and then we'll build upon that. So I might want my heading or banner at the very top of the page. Digital photography made easy. I might want a navigation, which is a list of the articles on this page, almost like a table of contents in this case. In other cases, it may take you to different pages, but in this case, it's just going to take me to different places within the same page. So I might want to have a link for choosing a camera and camera controls. All right. Then I would have my first article about selecting a camera and I have my headings and paragraphs in there. My second article about the camera controls and then at the bottom of the page, I might have my footer that says copyright 2012, Mike Zeller's whatever. All right. So for each of these sections, there are tags. All right. And this one is going to be the heading. Um, I'm sorry. Let me let me grab the book here. I didn't bring the book. Um, I'll, I'll just Google real quick. Okay, I was right. I had in my notes, I, or actually I was wrong. I had in my notes heading, but that didn't look right. And sure enough, it wasn't right. It's header. All right. So for each of these sections, there is a tag for it. Header. This can either be a page or a, a, a section header. Which also you should not confuse with the heading. That's correct. 
there is a nav section. which is for navigation. There's an article section, uh, article tag where I can group each articles. And then finally there's a footer tag. All right. This allows us to divide our page into real common sections. All right. And I'm going to go and I'm going to put these in uh, my code and then go from there. Correcting my notes so I don't make this mistake next semester. All right, so let's go and do this for this page. All right. Now, this is where it gets a little confusing because I can have a header for an article or I can have a header for the whole page. In this case, this line, Digital Photography Made Easy, and I'll put it back on one line, it's sort of the header for the whole page. Thank you. Nope. <laughs> Got a guess. So, I'll go here and I'll put header meaning that this is a document header. Then put my navigation section. And we'll fill this in in a minute. So right now I'll just put in the words fill in later. All right. We'll we'll fill that in in a minute here. I then have each of these two things could be considered articles. Or I only have one now, but I'll put the article tag in for this. put in my end article tag. Were I not doing this in front of a class, I'd spend more time to format that a little nicer. Nice thing is, it doesn't matter to the browser, right? But uh, in this case, you know, just because of, of time constraints, I'm just going to leave that as it is. And it doesn't really matter. Then I have my end of my article. Now I can have my next article. About Camera controls. Now, actually, we can make this an H2. I suppose we can make it an H1 too because it's the top level heading for that article. All right. That's a little ambiguous. Right. Yeah. This is a way that makes sense to me to do it this way as well. So I'll, I'll just put some text here. Yeah. And then finally I'll have my footer section. That says copyright. Oh, 
All right, so let's go and save this and look at it. Repeat that, please. Yeah, you can just type it as text, and, and you can put the copyright symbol in. I'm just not going to talk about that right this minute. So let's go and look at this. And there's our new page. Now, you look at this and say, well, okay, those extra tags didn't really um, make that much of a difference in the way the page looks. That's okay. The purpose of HTML is to define the structure and content of the document. In other words, this HTML page consists of a navigation section, all right, a header, an article, another article, and a footer. We have described that in the HTML. The nice thing is, is then we can go later on when we review CSS and talk about things like what do we make the footer look like? Maybe we make the text in the footer a little bit smaller. Maybe we make the banner, or I'm sorry, the header uh, bigger and a different color, and so on. By doing this, and this is called semantic HTML, um, we're not putting anything about the appearance, we're just structuring the page uh, the way that um, it, it, it should, uh, it, it ought to be, all right? then that will help us get the most flexibility we can. For example, one of the things I'm teaching this semester for the first time is a class on mobile web development. All right, so you develop a web page that looks nice on a desktop. Well, what about how it's going to view on a mobile phone? Well, it might look a lot different on a mobile phone because you simply have less space and a number of other considerations. Well, if you describe in the HTML the structure of the page, you can then develop a solution that will make it work both in a desktop environment and a mobile environment. But you don't get that unless you've accurately described the content of the document and the structure of the document in HTML. All right. Questions at this point? All right. Let's make our navigation work. All right. Let's make our navigation work. And we're going to do that by introducing um, a new concept and a handful of new tags. All right. Let's talk about the tags that we're going to use first. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to create the tags for a list of items. All right. We're going to use a list tags. Now, a list is what? A list is a series of items. What is navigation on a page? It's a series of links, a number of links. So therefore, our navigation, I'm going to put in a list, because it's a list of links, a list of places that you can go to on the page. There's two kinds of lists, but we'll only talk about the one kind in any detail. I might mention the other kind. And the list that we're going to talk about is the UL. And UL stands for unordered list. Um, an unordered list is a list that isn't really organized in any definitive way. For example, on this page I have choosing a camera and uh, the controls of the camera. Why did I put them in that order? I don't know, because I felt like it. That's the order I thought of them. <laughs> all right? Nothing important. All right? That's an example of an unordered list, where the order isn't really meaningful, but you know, there has to be something first and something second, so you just do it that way. That's an unordered list. An ordered list would be like, for example, if I was showing the baseball standings you know, in uh, Eastern Division or whatever. You know, hey, the first place team, that matters that the first place team is listed above the second place team. There's a, there's a clear reason for that, all right? Or if there was a poll, you know, uh, what's your favorite kind of pizza? You know, maybe I would, pe you know, pepperoni's number one on top, and cheese is number two, and mushrooms is number three, 
All right? There the order, there's a clear-cut order that you put them in where the order matters. And that's called an ordered list. And ordered lists work just like unordered lists, except instead of a UL, you use an OL. And then you get some numbers alongside them to show the first item, the second item, and third item. All right. But with an unordered list, we're just going to get bullet points. All right. Both ordered and unordered lists are consist, uh, consist of a series of LI tags. for however many items there are in the list. Now, for example, in this case, we have two articles on the page. We want to create two links, one to the first article, one to the second article. So there's going to be two list items. So there's going to be two LI tags. All right? Now keep in mind that there aren't two UL tags. There's one list. That list has two items in it. So again, uh, a common mistake that, that some people make is if they do a, a list like this, they'll do um, a couple ULs. A UL, a list item, a second UL, a list item. No, there's only one list, right? That list has two items in it or three items or whatever. So our list in our navigation is going to look something like this. All right? So I'm going to go and I'm going to put that code in. But we haven't talked about what this needs to be. So I'm just going to put a word in. All right, I'm just going to put some word in. So let's go in here. And I'll go and I'll put in my UL. And UL. LI. And I'll just put in now selecting a camera and LI camera controls. All right. So let's save this and look at it. All right, there's my list. Because I've chosen it to be an unordered list, it is simply bulleted. It's not numbered. All right? Now, trying to anticipate what you might be thinking. All right? You might be saying, those bullet points look ugly. I don't want my links to have bullet points. Be patient. We'll talk about this and how we can get rid of the bullet points. Remember, Right now, we're just dealing with the content of the page and the logical structure of the page. Hey, this is a list, so we put it in a list tag. If we don't like the way it looks, um, we can use CSS to go and change the way it looks and say, okay, I don't want bullet points for that. I don't want anything for that. Or I don't want bullet points. I want little diamonds. Or I want this. Or I want that. We can change the appearance any way that we choose to, but it's still a list, right? So it should be in a list tag, all right? Now, the other thing, of course, is these aren't links yet, right? They're just plain text. Why are they plain text? Well, because there's no markup that says that this is a link, all right? So what we have to do is we have to add a link tag to this, all right? Now, the tag for a link is the A tag. And A actually stands for anchor. I don't know why they picked that. It doesn't sound like, it doesn't look like an anchor, it doesn't act like an anchor, but that's what it stands for. Hey, I didn't make this up. I'm <laughs> don't blame me. Now, if you think about it, if I just put on here an A, what's sort of wrong with that picture?
If I just put an A tag here, a link to what? <laughs> All right. A link to which of the 2 billion or 200 billion or however many web pages there are out there? Or a link to where on my page do I want to go? All right. With a link, it's not enough to say, I want this text to be a link. It's not like a header. It's not like a title. It's not like an H1. It's not like a P. It's not like any of the other tags we've encountered so far. We need an additional piece of information. And that is where the link is going to. All right. And additional information about a tag is called an attribute. All right. Look at it this way. Let's say I, I were to ask you to take something to, to, to my car for me. I, I would say, you know, hey, could you take this to my car? You know, you're liable to say, okay, sure, but which one is your car? You know, I go out there, there's, uh, you know, hundreds of cars over there. I'd have to tell you something about the car. Maybe I'd tell you that, you know, the license plate number, or maybe I'd tell you the color and make, or maybe I'd tell you where it's parked, or something like that. The point is, I couldn't just say, here, take this to my car. Yeah, I'd have to give some additional information. Same idea here. I can't say I have a link. I have to give some additional information. Now, that's accomplished through an attribute. And an attribute is extra information. And in the case of a link, one of the pieces of additional information we can give is contained in the href attribute. An attribute, again, is additional information. Go to my car. Which one's my car? The red Mustang. All right? Additional information. I have a link. A link to what? To this web page or to this location. Now, that href can be the name of a different website. So I could make a link to Google, for example. It could be to a different page that I've created. Or it could be to a different spot within my page. And that's what we're going to do first. To specify that I want to link to a different spot in my page, I say pound sign and then give a name. All right. Then I have to go and put that name somewhere on my page so the link knows where to go. So let's take a look. I'm going to go here. I'm going to say a href equals pound select and I'm going to go and I'm going to put an ID on the article that says select. For this one, I'm going to put the word controls as the ID. Like this. And then I'll put the ID on this guy. of controls. So let me go and save that. And let's view it in the browser. Now, I'm going to make it real big so that it scrolls past the end of the, sc uh, of the screen. All right. So notice now that those are blue and underlined. That indicates that we made them links, right? Because that's the default look of a link. You don't want your links blue and underlined? CSS. We'll come to that later. All right. Now, Watch what happens when I click on camera controls. It takes me to that position in the page. Or I'm going to make my window a lot smaller. If I click on selecting a camera, it takes me to that part of the page. It takes me to that part of the page. Again, this would look better if there was more content with it. It would be more obvious it was going to that spot. So that's how I create a link within a page. 
And that, that's something that you have to do for your second assignment. You have to create a web page that contains at least a couple articles and a navigation section and so on. So, let's review this. How do we make a link? First of all, we use the A tag. Second of all, we have to specify an href. An href is what the page is linked to. Alright? That's called an attribute because that's additional information about this link. That's where we're going to. It's not its own tag, so there's not like an href tag. Notice it's between the tag and the greater than sign at the end. Some HTML tags are going to have several attributes and they're all between the less than sign and greater than sign. In this case, the href attribute says that where it wants to go to. When you see a pound sign there, that says go to the thing on the page that has that as the ID. So in this case, the link is to the section of the page that has select as the ID, that matches that. This one goes to the section of the page that has an ID of controls. Now, I'm going to real quickly just show you a couple other ways that we can make links. And the links are mainly going to look the same, but there's going to be a little bit of difference in the href. If I want to link to a page out on the web, let's say I want to link to Google on my page. My href doesn't begin with a pound sign. Instead it contains the address of the page. Usually what I do is I'll just go to the web page I want to make a link to and copy it. All right. Put it in there. And that will create a link to someone else's page. So now I have this and I have a link to Google. If I click on that link, it takes me over to Google. I'm going to create a second photography page just to have one. And I'm going to make it real simple. I'm just going to say it's the second page. If I want to link to another one of my pages, assuming it's in the same folder, both these pages are on the desktop, the desktop is just a folder, all I have to do is specify the name of the page. Uh, but I do have to get the exact name of it. So photography2.html. That's why it's good to know the exact extension. So we have these three possibilities for links. A link to something on the page has a pound sign in front of it that corresponds to the ID attribute of a different part of the page. I have the full web address of something if I want to link to a different <laughs> website's page. And then lastly, I, if it's in the same folder and it's one of my pages, I just need to specify the name of the page. So, if we go and view this, we now have these 
four links. If I click on my second page, it brings up my second page. If I click on this, it takes me to that section of this page. And lastly, if I click on Google, it takes me to Google's site. The interesting thing is, is that as far as HTML goes, we're certainly going to learn more tags, right? We haven't talked about how to do images and so on. But really, in concept, there's not a lot more concepts as far as HTML. Tags, nesting, um, attributes, you know, those are the basics of tags. Now, it's just a matter of like, I want to put an image on the page. Okay, how do I do that? All right. I know it's going to be a tag. It's going to look similar to these other tags. It's going to have a name. It's going to have some attributes. And then finding out what those things are. So we'll continue to build up our arsenal of tags so we can put more and more stuff on our page. At some point, I have to check the syllabus to see exactly where, we'll start looking at the appearance of the page and how we can make it look better instead of this just very straightforward uh, look. All right. That's all that I had for today. We'll see you up in lab.